Hello and welcome to my live broadcasting. God bless everyone who just joined in. Jesus is Lord and Islam is false. Guys, let me know if you can hear me in the text so we can start this live show. This is a test. This is a test. Please give me a one in the text if you can hear me. Thank you, thank you for the confirmation. Thank you very much. It's showtime! <laughs> Guys, welcome. Uh, today I started the live show early because uh, our Asian Christian friends, our Asian brothers and sisters uh, told me lately that when we broadcast it's going to be very late in their time zone so out of respect and love for our asian brothers and sisters who are doing an amazing and wonderful job in countries like indonesia and malaysia we are also thinking with you so this is why i started today's live show early today we are going to talk about the contradictions of the so-called and self-proclaimed prophet of Islam, Muhammad. Now we know that Muhammad created Islam for his own sexual desires and power. He created Islam for his own agenda. And we are doing this not to make fun of Muslims. We are doing this because we love Muslims. And we know that Muslims are a victim of this satanic cult especially Muslims who do not speak Arabic or understand the Quran and the Hadith in Arabic so we are here to teach them and teach everyone who is listening and watching that when Muslims translate when Muslims try to do dua invite people uh, da'wah invite people to Islam or in debates we will show you that they are nothing but deceivers and liars especially who the ones who claim to know about Islam so what are we going to do today guys what is today's topic on this live broadcast we will have the opportunity to do a nice teaching we will go through some Islamic sources and see if Muhammad contradicted himself in the Quran and Hadith. And of course, you know me, right? We are going to expose his lies and statements to prove to you that he is a fake prophet. Last but not least, when I finish my teaching, we will have a nice Q&A session like always with our guests in the live chat. This can be about Islam or the mentioned topics during this teaching. In other words, you can go ahead and ask me questions in the live chat and I will try to answer the questions as far as I can. Then also when I finish my teaching, Muslims, only Muslims please, they can call in live on my Skype for a nice and respectful discussion my skype id if the admins in the live chat can give it in the text my skype id is the rob christian without any separations the rob christian so don't call me when i'm in the middle of my teaching we can do that after i am done teaching today so please don't call me as long as I'm not finished with my teaching. And I would ask everyone in the chat, if you are a Christian, please don't call in, okay? If you are a Muslim, feel free to call me after I finished my teaching. And I noticed, I want to add something on top of this. I noticed that I missed a couple of very important questions in my first and second live broadcasting a couple days ago. There was a Muslim called Abdul Lutba who was calling me a joke for not answering his questions. Well, Abdul Lutba 
my live show is not only about you, right? So people are, have been asking me a lot of questions and, you know, I can't see all the questions. I'm a human, right? So I saw your question and I'm going to answer your question after I'm done teaching. And there are other questions that have been asked that we that I will try to address too in the first and second live broadcasting. So that's today. That's the agenda for today, guys. I want to welcome everyone who just joined in. Please, if you can, invite your friends. Maybe you can also post the link on your social media account. Today we are going through some Quran, Ayahs and Hadith. So let us start with a nice Hadith by Muhammad. This is a great Hassan Hadith from Sunan Ibn Majah, Hadith number 2830. I hope you can see the screen. Let me make it bigger so you can see it. Muhammad is saying, I asked, sorry, uh, the, the reporter is saying, I asked the messenger of Allah about the food of the Christians and he said, the prophet of Islam said, do not have any doubt about food, thereby following the ways of the Christians in that. So here Muhammad is saying that Muslims, it's halal for them to eat the food of Christians. Wait a second, Muhammad. If Muslims, if the believers, the Muslims in Islam are allowed to eat our food, that means you just allowed the Muslims to eat pork because Christians, we eat pork. Uh-oh, Muslims, your fake prophet, he just made a nice dilemma for you. He created a very contradictory statement here because you Muslims always say pork is najis pork is not halal but here Muhammad is allowing you to eat the food of Christians and Christians we can eat everything right we are allowed to eat pork so Muslims according to Muhammad you are allowed to eat what Christians make and that includes pork. Uh oh, Muslims. And we can also find this in the Quran, not only in the hadith. So Muslims cannot say this is a fake hadith because as we showed you, that was a Hassan hadith. And it's also mentioned in the Quran. Look what it says. Al yawma ihulla lakum so basically the Quran here is saying this day goods have been made lawful for you and the food of those who were given the scripture who are those who are given the scripture the Jews and the Christians not only the Christians this, so this ayah makes it even more worse because here in this last ayah that we mentioned this is only talking about the Christians right but here it's also the Jews the food of the Jews right you know Muhammad loves to have a cake and eat it too he was nothing but a hypocrite as you see how are you allowing in the Quran Muslims to eat the food of Jews and Christians and especially the Christians because we eat pork so Muslims are allowed to eat pork so why do Muslims say that they cannot eat pork because it's najis it's not halal it's filthy so here Muhammad made a big poo poo he contradicted himself so he's nothing but a fake prophet because a fake prophet would have never made this statement right Muslims as you see in front of you the proof is in front of you you can read it you see 
people in the chat, you see how Muslims don't actually read and understand their Quran and Hadith. They actually don't read. This is why I always say Islam is a nation of illiteracy. So if I am going to do a nice barbecue, guys, as a Christian, and I invite some Muslims and I have pork meat, according to the Quran and according to Muhammad, the Muslims that I have invited, they can eat nice pork ribs that I made very delicious, you know? Maybe some hummus and falafel and tabbouleh on the side, right? I mean, honest to God, I really make a nice falafel and tabbouleh. You should taste them, man. You will eat your own fingers. I mean, I'm from the Middle East, you know? That's our specialty. <laughs> ah, Muslims. So as you see, guys, Muhammad was nothing but a hypocrite and he loved to contradict his own self and the Quran of Allah. Because here, as, as we showed you, اليوم أحل لكم الطيبات والطعام الذين أوتوا الكتاب the Jews and the Christians, right? Let us go to a, another hadith. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih, Sahih. The Prophet said, you will follow the wrong ways of your predecessors so completely and literally that if they should go into the hall of Mastijr, you will, too will go there. So yeah, that's because you, Muhammad, are telling them to do so. You are the ones telling them to eat pork as we showed you. Do you see guys? He is the one who is giving them a contradictory advice. First you say pork is najis, it's not halal, but you tell them to eat the food of the Christians, right? So you are the one who are causing that. So here, here again he is contradicting himself because it says, do you mean the Jews and the Christians? So this guy is asking, do you mean the Jews of the Christians? And Muhammad replies, whom else? But you are the one telling them to eat the food of the Jews and the Christians. You hypocrite, fake prophet of Islam, Muhammad. You see guys? This is the hypocrisy, and this is, like I said, from Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 3456. Sahih, Sahih al-Bukhari. So as you see, guys, Muhammad was nothing but a hypocrite. And I think he really used to forget what he said earlier. One day he says this, the others say he said something contradictory. And this is the sign and proof of a fake prophet. Again, Muhammad is a fake prophet. Right? Let us go to a, another source to prove to you that Muhammad is a fake prophet and a hypocrite who loved to contradict himself over and over. As you see here in front of you, this is the famous chapter of the sword at Tawbah, other nickname for it is Chapter of the Sword, Chapter 9, Ayah 31. It says, They have taken their scholars and monks as lords beside Allah and also the Messiah. Now, this is a fake translation, guys. This is not what the Arabic says. Because here it says, Min duni Allahi wa and the Messiah. Did you catch it, guys? So it doesn't say what it says here. Besides Allah, no, it says beside, or the real translation should not be beside, it should be instead of. So this is also a false translation. It should be instead of Allah, wal Masih. So here, he's saying that the Christians are worshipping their scholars and monks. But wait a second, show me any Christian who worshipped monks. 
This is a false statement by Muhammad. You hypocrite. Why are you such a hypocrite, Muhammad? Why are you lying about the Christians? And why are you asking for shirk here? And there is nothing called also in the Arabic. Guys, whenever you see words between brackets like this, that means this is added by the filthy scumbag translator. And Sahih International, guys, is written by three women. I kid you not. The Sahih translation, which is the most used translation in the world for the Quran, is written by three women. What did Muhammad say about the women? Anyone? Muhammad said that women in Islam are deficient in their brains. So they are basically half brain. So how you are you are you allowing three women to translate such an important book for Muslims, which is the Quran? How are you allowing them? You see the hypocrisy, guys? On the other hand, Muhammad is calling women in Islam half-brained, brain deficient, but on the other hand, this translation is used all over the world and is the most used translation done by women. You see the hypocrisy in Islam, guys? You see that? And you see Muhammad here is doing shirk. He's calling Allah and the Messiah God. Last time I checked, Muslims always say only Allah should be worshipped. Right? They love to tell you about Tawheed. Tawheed, which they call oneness, which is not again. Tawheed, guys, in Arabic, Tawheed in Arabic means unification. For example, if I'm going to say, as a priest, I want to unify the wife with her husband to become one, I will say in the Arabic, now pay attention, Ana awahad al imra'a ma'zawjiha. Did you catch it? Awahad, tawheed. Tawheed does not mean oneness, it means unification. To unify at least two things or at least two persons to become one. Did you catch it? And here, this is a per perfect example of unification. So who is the God according to this Quranic ayah? It's Allah wa al-Masih and the Messiah. So here, Muhammad made a huge poo-poo, a huge dilemma for the Muslims. Here, he busted Allah himself, his own Allah. And here, this is basically shirk, because Muslims always say, you Christians, you commit shirk, you worship Jesus. Right? And they love to attack the Trinity. But here, we have a unification of Allah and Al-Masih. And what about the three daughters of Allah? Let's, let us not go there to, uh, today. Let us not go too much off topic, but as you see here, Muhammad loved to have a cake and eat it too. And since when do Christians worship monks? We don't worship monks. Our God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One God. Right? One God. But we don't worship monks. We don't worship our scholars, which is another lie. Muhammad, you filthy liar, lying about the Christians. Always lying about the Christians. So guys, we can conclude that the Quran, as you see in front of you, is the work of Satan. And the messenger of Satan, who is Muhammad, the fake prophet. So Muhammad created Islam, guys, to attack the Bible and to attack Jesus Christ. Muslims, the proof is in front of you. Leave this dark satanic sex cult and come back to Jesus. The King of Kings, I advise you and I invite you to come back home. Leave this satanic cult. 
You see, guys, please take notes. You see how important it is to know Arabic? Because, as you see, this is a false translation, like we said earlier. It's very important to know Arabic because the text clearly says, Min duni Allah wal Masih. Allah wal Masih. Instead of Allah and the Messiah. So, who is God according to this ayah? Allah and the Messiah. Let us go to another source to show you that Muhammad kept making, making really embarrassing statements and contradicting himself. This is Surah Al-Baqarah, the chapter of the cow. Now why is it called the chapter of the cow? This is chapter 2, uh, 221, because according to the Quran, according to the story of the Quran, the cow, people kill the cow, I kid you not, <laughs> take notes guys, this is the biggest chapter of the Quran, it's called the cow because people kill the cow and they slept a dead guy around with part of the cow, the tafsir says uh, tail, others say the leg, and they started to beat the dead guy to make him alive again. So guys, from now on, if you, Lord of mercy, <laughs> from now on, <laughs> you know, it's embarrassing. I can't stop laughing about this cult, this lying deception cult. So according to Muhammad in the Quran, if you, you know, if you had a dead relative, you can slaughter a cow, take the leg or the tail of the cow and beat the dead guy around with it so he can become alive again. And why did they beat the dead guy to make him alive again? To tell them, so this guy can become alive again and tell them who killed him. Yes. What? Yes, that's exactly why it's called Al-Baqarah, the cow. Beating a dead person with a part of the cow to make him life, to resurrect him, so he can tell the people to witness that this, this or that guy killed me, maybe with a knife, maybe with the sword of Muhammad, who knows. <laughs> you see? <laughs> A lot of mercy. Uh, yeah, so this is <laughs> chapter of the cow, chapter 2, I had 221. Why did I pick this guys? Let me read it for you so I can explain. But not idolaters says till they believe. So here this ayah is saying to the Muslims, do not marry pagan women. Don't marry pagan women for lo, a believing bond woman is better than any idolatrous though she please you. So according to Muhammad, in the Quran, according to Allah and Muhammad, it's better to marry. And the word is not marry, guys, you know, it says tankihu, which means have sec in sexual intercourse, right? Again, a false translation. It does not say marry, it means sex. It's better to have sex with a Muslima instead of a pagan woman a Christian woman, a Jewish woman. But according to Islam, according to Islam, according to the Quran, you are allowed to marry a Christian or a Jewish woman. But wait a second, didn't the Quran say that we are pagans because we worship our monks? We Christians are blamed, and of course Muhammad was lying about us, saying that we worship our monks and we will be cursed by Allah for doing that. So how, how can Muslims say that they are allowed to marry Christian and Jewish women? 
And here, as you see, we are called pagans for worshipping Isa, as they call him, Jesus. So here again, another big contradiction, right? Another big contradiction. Let me show you guys. I think it's in chapter 5, I have 5, if I'm not mistaken. Let me look it up. Yeah. Just a second. You know, because when we say something, we don't want to lie. So Muslims cannot say, hey, you are liars, because we are going to show you the proof. Because in this ayah, you can see that the Quran is saying you are allowed to marry, or again, it does not say marry, Lord of mercy. It's always sexual intercourse. And lawful in marriage are chaste women from among the believers and chaste women from among those who are given the scripture. Who are those? The Jews and the Christians. So here, this ayah says to everyone, to the Muslims, you are allowed to have sex with Jews and Christian women. But as we showed you in the last ayah, we are called the Jews and the Christians, we are called pagans, right? Why? Like we mentioned earlier, Muslims always say, we are pagans for worshipping our scholars and monks. And of course, like we showed you earlier, Muhammad made a big poo, -poo because it says, instead of Allah and al Messiah. So again, Muhammad kept contradicting his own teaching. And we know that the Quran is the works of Muhammad. Did you catch it, guys? Please take notes. How can this guy be a prophet of God? How can this guy be a prophet of God? There is no way, shape or form that this is a prophet of God because a true prophet would have never contradicted himself. Please use this in your debates with Muslims, guys. I hope you are benefiting from this teaching, guys. All right? Let me go to another source to make it even more worse for Muhammad. As you see here, this is the most funny chapter of the Quran. This is chapter 109, and it's a very small chapter. It only has six ayahs, so it's a very small chapter, as you see in front of you. Now, let me show you that Muhammad again was contradicting himself and Muslims love to call it abrogation but they still use this in their debates to deceive you they say hey Islam is the most tolerant tolerant religion in the world which is false we're going to prove to you that Muslims cannot use those ayahs anymore this is chapter 109 and let me go through all the ayahs and first we're going to have fun and then I'm going to tell you how Muslims cannot use this this is a really embarrassing ayah, uh, surah with six ayahs in it. And let me show you why. Wherever you see the word worship, I will use eat or eating. So you will see how kind of joke this surah is. Say, O disbelievers, I do not eat what you eat, nor are you eating what I eat. Nor will I be eating of what you eat, nor will you be eating of what I eat. For you is your religion, for me is my religion. Basically, for you, for you is your food, and for me is my food. You see, 
What kind of jokes Muhammad was telling here in the Quran? So let me read it as it is. So, O oh disbelievers, I do not worship what you worship, nor are you worshippers of what I worship, nor will I be worshipper of what you worship, nor will you be worshippers of what I worship, for you is your religion and for me is my religion. What is this, man? What is this surah, man? Muslims really, is, is this a book of God? Allah needs to worship, uh, tell you how many times uh, that Jews and Christians or, or pagans do not worship what you worship? Allah needs to uh, repeat himself at least six times, five times? What is this? Is this are these eyes from God or is this a man-made? This is clearly man-made. Why does a God need to repeat himself over and over? In the same surah which is a very small surah. And Muslims love to use this still, while this is abrogated. Let me show you that Muslims cannot use this surah anymore, because here it says you, you are allowed, you know, for you your religion, for me is my religion. You are allowed to worship what you want, right? But if you go to chapter 9, this is cho uh, chapter at Toba again, the chapter of the sword, Ayah 9, sorry, chapter 9, Ayah 5. It says, and when the sacred months have passed, then kill the polytheists. Wait a second. Here, this chapter is one of the last chapters, guys. Chapter 109 is when Muhammad, without any army, he is still in Mecca trying to reconcile with the pagans. And when he went to Medina, he tried to reconcile with the Jews of Medina, which was called then Yathrib. So when Muhammad did not have an army, he said, it's okay for you is your religion, and for me is my religion, which is Islam. It's okay for you to have your own religion. It's okay to worship pagans, pagan idols, pagan gods. It's okay, do, go ahead. For you is your religion, for me is my religion. But then, in this chapter, he's commanding, or his God is commanding, to go and kill the poly polytheists. How, where's the tolerance here, guys? If this is a God, guys, if Allah is truly a God, then this God should have never ever abrogated himself. Basically guys, see this in front of you. This is Allah. Allah is walking in a candy store with his mother. <laughs> and Allah is seeing a really delicious candy. A nice popsicle. Right? And he says to his mom, Mom, I want this popsicle. I want some candy, I love some candy, la 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 la. Then, a couple minutes later, he sees a very delicious, bigger candy, or a ice cream. And then he drops that first popsicle, and he asks his mom, Mom, I want that ice cream, I want to have an ice cream, la 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 la. No, guys, I'm, I'm having jokes, right? You know? But as you see here, Allah, in the beginning of the so-called prophethood of Muhammad, he's saying to the people who he is inviting to Islam, it's okay. If you don't want to join Islam, it's okay. For you is your religion, and for me is my religion, right? But then Allah changes his mind because he is a fake God, right? A true God cannot change his mind. Here, Allah changed his mind when Muhammad has an army. He is strong enough. He doesn't need to use taqiyya, right? As you see. When Muslims, this is, this is the example of, of Muslims, guys. This is also what Muslims do. Muslims in the West, when they are outnumbered, they don't have an army. They have nothing to say. They have to follow, be silent, and follow the laws of that country in the West. They will use taqiyya, they will lie to you, 
they might be very nice to you too, but they will curse you in their hearts. Why? Because if you go to Al-Fatiha, you will see when Muslims repeat Al-Fatiha at least 15 times a day in their prayers, they are cursing the Jews and the Christians. So they might be nice to you, but in their heart and in their prayers, they are cursing you. I kid you not. They repeat the curses of Allah. Right? And they basically use what we call stage one, stage two, and stage three jihad. Now what is stage one, guys? Stage one is when Muslims are in a country where they are completely outnumbered. They don't have anything to say. They have to follow the laws of that country. That's stage one jihad. Take notes, guys. This is important. Stage two jihad, guys, is when Muslims are still in the West, for example. They are the big group there. For example, Dearborn, Michigan, which is a place in the USA, a city in the USA where you have a big number of Muslims. They are the bigger number, but still they have to follow the laws of that country, which is the USA. They still can do what they want, but they still don't have an army. They have to follow the rules. So they still can use taqiyah and deception. Remember, guys, remember, for them, jihad is war. And in war, you can use deception and lies, which is taqiyah, to deceive you. But in stage three, this is the last stage of jihad. When they own that country, they are outnumbering everyone. They have the power to set rules. They implement Sharia. They have the army. They don't need to use deception anymore. And they will kill everyone who is pagan or atheists if they don't convert to Islam. And they will force jizya, let me show you, they will force jizya on the Jews and the Christians who do not want to convert to Islam. Right? Fight against such of those who have been given the scripture, who are the Jews and the Christians, and believe not in Allah nor the last day. So here, as you see, Muhammad is commanding the Muslims, because here Muhammad is having an army, he is the biggest power, he is basically the ruler or the king of Arabia and Medina and Mecca, right? So here Muhammad does not use any taqiyah anymore, there is no need because he is the king, basically, right? So he doesn't need to say, for you is your religion and for me is my religion. So here, there is no tolerance anymore, no need for taqiyah anymore, right? And they have to force jizya on the Jews and the Christians if they don't want to accept Islam. And if the Jews and the Christians don't want to pay jizya, which is a mafia tax protection money, sorry, it's not a tax, sorry, it's a mafia protection money system, Right? You have to pay jizya, and it's a very big amount of money. Muslims love to call to say it or call it tax. It's not tax, it's punishment. Jizya, guys, comes from the root word jaza. Jaza means punishment, penalty. For example, let me give you an example in the Arabic. If people here are watching soccer, as they call it in the in America, we call it football also in other different countries, it's soccer or football. Penalty in the Arabic is called darbat al jaza Did you catch it guys? Darbat al jaza penalty, a penalty, right? From the 11 meters. When you have a guy facing the goal and he can try to score. Darbat al jaza a penalty. jaza jizya. Did you catch it? And Christians and Jews must 
pay it and feel subdued and humiliated. Sagirun. Right? يَعْطُوا الْجِزْيَةَ عَنْ يَدٍ وَهُمْ صَاغِرُونَ They have to pay it. They have to give the jizya to the Muslims and they must feel subdued and humiliated. What kind of religion is this, guys? That tells Muslim to force jizya, which is a punishment, mafia protection money. What kind of God forces this on his creation. La Feridat, you are saying in the text, why are you still lying on the Islam and on Jesus? Shame to Europe. Well, if I lied, please call me when I'm done. Call me. I allow you to call me and prove me wrong. Show me where I lied. Let's see if I lied. I challenge you and I challenge your istaz or imam. Bring your istaz along with you. I challenge you to show me where I lied. Okay? You can call me on Skype when I'm done teaching. In the Q&A time period. So as you see guys, as you see, Muhammad was a liar and a deceiver and he kept contradicting himself. Right? There's another ayah that Muslims love to use, guys. Please, guys, take notes. This is really important stuff. Use this in your debates. Right? This is, again, Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, ayah 256. Muslims love to use this in their debates with Jews and Christians to show you how tolerant Islam is. But again, this ayah, guys, is abrogated by Allah himself. So this ayah, like Surah Al-Kafirun, chapter 109, that we showed earlier, for you is your religion, for me is my religion, it's still in the Quran, but Muslims cannot use this. Even Allah himself is not allowing Muslims to use this. Right? Even Allah himself does not allow Muslims to use this ayah. And here is why. Let me first read the ayahs for you guys. There is no compulsion in religion. So you are allowed to practice Christianity, any other religion, according to this ayah. But as we showed you in this much later ayah, as, and, sorry, that's not true. You have to be converted to Islam. Only the Jews and the Christians, if they don't want to convert to Islam, they are forced to pay jizya and feel subdued and humiliated. Right? So the pagans will die anyway. The heads of the pagans will come off clean if they don't accept Islam. So again, this ayah has been abrogated by chapter 9, Surah at tawbah Chapter 9, abrogated also this ayah. And let me show you that Muslims actually cannot use this anymore. There is no compulsion in religion. La ikraha fid deen. Right? La ikraha fid deen. There is no compulsion in religion. Let me show you a trick. If we go to the tafsir, guys, I hope you can see this the screen with me. If we go to the screen, uh, sorry, if we go to this website, this is altafsir.com, the official government kingdom website of Jordan. This is owned by the king himself of Jordan. This is Asbab al-Nuzul by al-Wahidi. The reason or the tafsir by Asbab al-Nuzul by al-Wahidi for an ayah why it came down. Asbab al-Nuzul, the reason for coming down. This is the same chapter as you see, chapter 2, ayah 256. Chapter 2, ayah 256. Maybe uh, if the admins, let me try to copy the link and please save it in your bookmarks and use it. Now, if you see 
this tafsir, maybe you can't see it immediately that is, this is abrogated. Always make sure to look at the bottom because there might be other pages for the same tafsir. So here, if we click on the second page, because this is a very long tafsir, if we click on the second page, and this is the trick, if you go to the second page of this same tafsir, you see still, we are still on Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, ayah 256, for this ayah, right? The tafsir says, this was before the Messenger of Allah. So, this ayah was before the Messenger of Allah, Allah bless him and give him peace, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah is praying on Muhammad. This is false translation. Was commanded to fight the people of the book. Did you catch it? Where was he commanded to fight the people of the book? In this ayah, remember. Chapter of the sword, ayah 29. Fight against such of the given the scripture. The people of the scripture, the Jews and the Christians, right? So this is talking about that ayah that abrogates chapter 2, ayah 256. Continue reading guys. But then Allah saying there is no compulsion in religion. Was abrogated. And the Prophet was commanded to fight the people of the book in Surat Repentance. Did you catch it guys? So Muslims cannot use chapter 2, ayah 256 anymore. You see the hypocrisy of Muslims? They love to use deception guys. Please, for the love of God, use this. Take notes. Use this in your debates with Muslims. When they love to talk about how tolerant Islam is to other religions. Did you catch it guys? Guys, please subscribe and like this video. Don't forget to do that because if you like the video, we will ha end up in higher positions on YouTube. So it's very important to like the video, guys. So as you see, guys, as you see, like I said, guys, please subscribe and smash that like button. So as you see, The proof is in front of you. This ayah has been abrogated. You see the sneaky Muslims? You see the sneaky Muslims when they love to show you abrogated verses like this? There is no compulsion in religion. Like Raf din So Muslims cannot use this ayah anymore. Take notes guys. Right? Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy because Muslims are allowed to use deception because jihad, they always struggle, right? They call it struggle. They always are in jihad mode. Even if they debate you, they use deception because remember they are always at war with you. So in when you have war, you are allowed to use deception and lies. And this is why they lie to you guys when you debate them. You see the hypocrisy of this fake prophet? And how, how is Allah calling himself God while he loves to abrogate his own words in the Quran? The reason why guys you have something called abrogation in Islam is because Muhammad simply kept forgetting what he was forging because Islam is a forgery right he created Islam for his own sexual desires and lust for power so whenever he gave an ayah to his followers the Muslims he forgot it a couple days later because Muhammad was actually busted in the hadith Muslims came to him and said hey Muhammad hey prophet of Islam This, this is the ayah, right? And he said, oh, I forgot it. Allah caused me to forget it, right? Let me show you that according to Muhammad, Allah is the one causing him to forget ayahs. He is blaming Allah for it. But, uh, you know, Muhammad, you know, Muhammad is the one who 
is inventing ayahs and blaming his Lord for it. You know, when Satan gave Muhammad the satanic verses to Muhammad, and then Allah abrogates it. So if Muhammad was actually a prophet of God, how did Allah allow Satan to cast words on the tongue of Muhammad. This is in the Quran. Muslims cannot deny that, that the satanic verses are actually a fact, a historical fact in the life of Muhammad. Remember when Muhammad was in Mecca, he went to the pagan Qurayshi, pagans of Mecca. He went to them and he said very beautiful stuff about their idols. <laughs> That's the satanic verses, guys. These are the high flying cranes, right? And their intercession is hoped for. So then G <laughs> the so-called angel, we know it's de a demon, but the so-called angel of Islam, Jibreel, he came to Muhammad and he said to Muhammad, spank, spank Muhammad, what have you done? I I didn't give you these eyes. These are the eyes of Satan. Let me show you guys. If we go to the same chapter, but, but the tafsir for this chapter, chapter 22, tafsir for ayah 52, we're going to show you the satanic verses. Now pay attention guys. So when Muhammad was in Mecca, this is for Tafsir for chapter 22, ayah 52. The Messenger of Allah, Allah bless him and give him peace, recited it, but when he reached, have you thought upon Allah, al uzza wal manad the third and the other? Chapter 53, ayahs 19, 20. The devil, Satan, put on his tongue, on the tongue of who? Of Muhammad, what he had sickly wished and hoped for and said, these are the mighty cranes and their intercession is hoped for. So guys, People who are asking, who, what are the satanic verses? This is the satanic verses that is highlighted in front of you guys. These are the satanic verses. Al-Gharaniq al-Ula, inna shafa'atahunna laturtaja. These are the mighty cranes and their intercession is hoped for. So when the Quraysh, when the pagans of Quraysh heard this, they were very pleased. Muslims cannot deny this, guys. This is a very respected source, which is the tafsir for the Quran. And the proof is in front of you that Satan actually did cast the satanic verses on the tongue of Muhammad. So Muhammad gave them the satanic verses and the pagans were very happy with it. Thank you, Muhammad. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. So the Messenger of Allah carried on reciting until the end of the surah and prostrated. Sujood. Sujood means prostration. So he prostrated to the idols of Mecca. All the Muslims followed suit and prostrated and all the pagans, the idolaters, idolaters who were present prostrated too. To who? To the three daughters of Allah. Allah, Al-Uzza, wal manad three mighty crane idols, the bird idols of pagan Mecca. Take notes guys, let me give you the link to this tafsir in the chat. Bear with me guys, let me copy and paste it. This is the link for this tafsir. This is the official kingdom website of Jordan for the tafsir. So Muslims cannot say this is a fake website. Right? If we go to the main or home button, you will see here it was begun with the Royal Al Al Bayt Institute for Islamic Thought, the kingdom of Jordan. So the Muslims cannot say this is a fake website. This is owned by the King of Jordan, guys. This is not my website. This is not the website of Rob, of Rob Christian. This is the website of the King of Jordan himself. 
owned and paid by the king of Jordan. Right? So, what are the satanic verses? The satanic verses, these are the mighty cranes and their intercession is hoped for. And the Qurayshi pagans were happy that Muhammad was talking very positive about their idols, which are the Allat and the Al-Uzza wal Manad, the three bird idols that used to carry. Why they are called bird idols, guys? Because you need to understand that Allah already existed before Islam was created by Muhammad. So Allah was the supreme moon idol and his three daughters, Allat Al-Uzza wal Manad, they had wings. They used to carry the prayers of the pagan of Mecca to Allah the moon idol. So they interceded, right? They interceded for the pagan Quraysh. This is why it says their intercession is hoped for. So whenever the pagans used to pray to the moon idol Allah, those three bird idols, the daughters of Allah, used to carry the prayers all the way up to Allah. The moon, supreme idol, the supreme moon idol of the pagans. So Muhammad actually took Allah, he adopted Allah into Islam. Guys, thank you for your donations. Thank you for your donations. If you can donate to us, you can become a patron on my Patreon account. Thank you very much. And if you can support us and donate us, please, you can also use the super chat. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the, today's teaching. So if there are any questions, if there are any Muslims, please call me on my Skype ID. Skype ID is D Rob Christian. D Rob Christian. Let me put it in the text. D Rob Christian. Add me on Skype and call me. Please, guys, only Muslims are allowed to call me so we can have a nice discussion. So if there are other questions in the live chat, please put them in the live chat so we can answer your questions. But first, guys, before I answer your questions, let me first answer the questions that I mentioned because I told you in my first and second live stream, there was an Abdul, a Muslim, who was calling me a joke for not answering his question. Oh, we have ultimate truth calling me. I think this guy did not have learned from his mistake in the other time. Let me answer this call. Let's see what this guy has to say. Hi, can you hear me, my friend? Ultimate truth, can you hear me? What's up? Yo, what's up? What do you want to say? Oh, like always, uh, let me go back on Skype. I, I gotta hear you good. Uh, like always, you know, debunking. You debunking me? Really? You know. You I've and what? Doing. You and what army? <laughs> I I have been doing it. How how you how have you been? Uh, 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 what? Please use how English, man. I can't understand you. Please talk clearly. I said, how how have you been, Rob? Oh, I'm very good, thank you. How how are you? I uh, did you leave Islam already? Uh, I'll make you leave Christianity because you know you are you are making me leave Christianity. How didn't you watch the live show, the teaching that I gave you? I showed everyone, and the proof is in front of you that your fake prophet was nothing but the messenger of the devil. The devil put the satanic verses on the tongue of your fake prophet. How is Allah allowing the Satan to control and play with the mind of Muhammad? Huh? Oh, I'm just, I'm just showing you something, you know. I'm no, 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 you tell me. I am asking you a question. 
How just, do you how do you call wait 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 you called me you called me and we are having a topic yes. why why did Allah allow Satan to put satanic ayahs on the tongue of Muhammad why did Allah allow it uh, listen to me first please I, please answer I please answer don't give me speech answer go ahead I'm not giving you speech I listen to you live that's right so i got objections about from the beginning i'm gonna start from the beginning you start about you start no 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 about we can go there but please please answer my question first. we can go there we can go there answer the question answer listen. the question please no 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 you listen answer my question you made some claims in your we will your go life. there we will go there we will go from there one by one one by one first address my question How, why did Listen, Abdul, Abdul, listen. Don't waste my time. I asked you a question. I asked you a question. Why did Allah allow Satan to play with the mind of Muhammad, putting satanic verses on his tongue? Allah, Muhammad is just a human being. Muhammad is not God. He made a yes. mistake. He made a mistake. He made a mistake. He made, uh, he made mistakes uh, throughout the Quran because yes. he's a human being. Because so, human. yeah. So, are you telling us? Are you telling us that you know and that you agree that Muhammad, that Muhammad, gave the satanic verses to the pagan idols and the Muslims in Mecca? No, no, nobody got no. Uh, uh, you want to? Well, the no? proof is in front of you. Why are you lying? The proof is in front of you. No. Don't Allah you see the screen? That, Don't Allah you see the screen? Said, Let me. I, I know. I know what you're talking about. I got it in mind. Allah said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ وَلَا نَبِينَ حَتَى إِذَا طَمَنَّا حَلَقَ شَيْدًا فِي أُمْنِيَةِ Okay, right? so let me translate guys. He just said, every yes, prophet, said, every prophet. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. Wait, you are, you are quoting this ayah, yeah, right? No, you are quoting me, chapter 22, ayah 52. I know this ayah. Wait, my friend, wait, wait. So you yeah, are, you are saying, you are saying, you are, you are telling me that every prophet of God let me speak English Satan. to people. Let me answer for myself. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Why are you answering but, for me? You're but don't for lie. Me. Don't lie like your Allah about the prophets because there's no prophet who don't. was controlled by Satan. Don't lie about the re real true prophet. Shame on you. You lied about the verse. You lied about the verse. The verse is saying, You, 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 you made it look like this verse is just about. Uh, about prophet Muhammad. it's about all the prophets true. right it's all about all the prophets yes. right but, 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 yes but you know you lied about that right you said how did i lie how did i lie you said he's just talking to muhammad no okay, okay. Wait, wait 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 okay can you can you give me get, wait can you right. give me wait since you made the claim and since your allah made this claim can you show me one prophet can you show me one prophet who satan gave him the satanic verse ex Except Muhammad. Uh, okay, show me one, one prophet. Give me one name of a prophet. No, no, wait, wait. Can you give me one prophet who was given the satanic verses like Muhammad? Give me one name. Satan tempted Jesus for 40 days in your Bible. <laughs> Satan, say, what did Satan do to Jesus? Come again. Satan. Yeah. Tempted Jesus for five days. Oh, yeah. for and days. did and did Satan did Satan yeah. su succeed? Did Satan succeed? Can you, can you wait, wait, no, no, no. Okay, since you since you brought Jesus up, did <laughs> Satan succeed in deceiving Jesus? Go one ahead. One name, right? You asked me to give you one name, right? Yeah. So I'm. You, but okay, okay so you then, give me one name. You give me one name. You give me Jesus. Did Jesus did Jesus fall for the temptation of Satan? Yes or no? Jonah, I can give you Jonah too. Wait, right? before we go to Jonah, before we go to Jonah, did Satan name, succeed in deceiving him, Jesus? No, 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 no. Man, you asked me a answer, question. Answer, answer, no I answer. Can, no, no, you, no, you, you brought, you wait, wait, said, Abdul, wait, said, wait, Abdul, wait, wait, wait. Why did your Allah permit it, Satan, to put some satanic verses in your, in your, in your book, right? Just let me answer. Lord of mercy. It's simple. Please, let me answer your question. People, listen. Answer my question about Jesus. I'll ask my question about Jesus. Did Satan succeed into giving the satanic verses and deceive Jesus? Yes or no? If, if Satan can control your God for 40 days, yes, he succeeded. 
for 40 days? Do you know what 40 no, days No, he did mean? not. What did Jesus say to Satan? I, I am your mean? law. It is written, do not no, test. I Wait, did the Jesus said, it's it's written, do not test your say that, Lord say that and can God. Say my Allah. But Satan can tempt your God for 40 days. Who was No, God he did not. He did not tempt him. Days. He did not tempt him. He failed to tempt Jesus. Shame on you for lying. He made. He tried. He tried. Temptation is meaning test. He tried to tempt. He tried to test. Did he succeed? Abdul, Abdul, don't waste my time. Did Satan succeed in tempting Jesus? Go ahead. Please. Get the, same way he, the same way he did not succeed to to tempt Muhammad, the same way he did not yes, succeed he did. to tempt he Jesus did. because he they did. were protected. He did. Don't and, lie. He did. Muhammad was for he one did. minute, Jesus was for 40 days. Did you know, Satan did Satan cast the satanic verses on the mouth of Muhammad? Yes or no? I said they did not come out. They did not come out. Yes, they came out. Look what no. it says. When the Quraysh heard, wait, Abdul, shut up, Abdul, shut up, shut up for a second. Read with me. When the Quraysh heard this, they were very pleased. So Muhammad actually did give the satanic verses to the pagans. Let me read. It's in front of you. Why are you lying? I'm not on YouTube. Let me read the verse for you, bro. You know, no, no, read, read, the screen, read the screen, read the screen, read the screen, read the screen. It's the same. What does it say have, there? What I'm does it say there? Listen, what does it say I'm there? Home. Listen to me. Let me read the verse, please. Okay? Be, okay. be respectful. You ask okay. me a question. Go ahead, read, 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 your read your satanic verse, read. Okay. Um, it, uh, so, we did not send before you. We did not send before you Muhammad this verse is not even talking to 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 Muhammad we did not send before you any messenger nor a prophet without the devil interfering in his wishes but so so the devil did that right the devil did interfere yeah, but right? this, so he succeeded this, this, is not, <laughs> this is not talking to Muhammad he said no, before messenger. you Muhammad we did not Omar min this, yes this you Muhammad it did not yes. say to you. This verse is not saying that 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 Muhammad was tempted. This is saying before you, Muhammad. So it's not talking to Muhammad. Do, do you understand English? We did not send. Do you understand? Do you understand English? Nathan, it say it say. Does it say we, we did not send before you or not? It says it says in the Arabic. Uma arsalna min qablika min rasulin yeah. wala nabiyin. Right. So it Translate. means. It means every prophet. The fr it's the proof is in front of you. Every prophet. And here, here is the proof that your prophet fell for the deception of Satan. It's in front of you. Yes, including Muhammad. Including Muhammad. That's what it means in the Arabic. How can you say? Including, because, because, because the ayah says, right? The ayah says. That Satan, Satan put his words, and then Allah received Allah abolish what it, what Satan gave. So, and and if we go to the tafsir, the devil gave the satanic verses to Muhammad, and Muhammad delivered them to the Quraysh, and the Quraysh were very pleased. And on top of that, he did sujood, act of worship, prostrating, and everyone prostrated, including your prophet. Stop lying. Let me no, read. 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 No, no, no. I'm not lying. Shame on you. Read. Can you read? That's a shame if you're not going to read, talk, it's a shame you that you won't let me talk. I'm I allowing you to talk, shame. but read. Read. We have a debate. Talk. Read. And let me talk. Read. I'll let me talk. Read. Okay, please. Read. Please give respect. No, 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 no. You're going to read. The verse say. Okay, you're going to read say, your own tafsir. This is not my tafsir. This is your tafsir. The verse say, "We never sent before you, Muhammad." Uh, any messenger before you, Muhammad, any mess, uh, so before you, Muhammad, any messenger or prophet without Satan interfering with his wishes, Allah then nullifies what Satan has tried to do. Allah perfect his revelations because Allah is omniscient and wise. So, this is telling you clearly that Satan cannot enter, enter the word of Allah. Okay, are you done? So, are you done? Yes. Okay. No, this, Let me. Uh, now no, I can no, talk, no. right? Now I can talk, right? If you are done. Uh, uh, Thirty seconds. Now. Okay. This is 
this says clearly that every prophet or every messenger it is plain english we did not send before you rob means that it's before you rob we we're not talking to rob we're talking to the those sent before rob okay are we you did done not send before you rob any messenger or are you any done? okay okay we got the message you don't need to repeat yourself uh, okay just, 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 just give me to, uh, give me 30 seconds so Uh, before you rob any messenger or prophet that Satan didn't try to to mess up their message Allah okay. protected them protected his message Satan is here for a purpose is to mess up people you know that that's why he messed you up that's why he messed Paul up that's why you following the teachings of Paul according and to Ibn Kathir Paul is a West messenger of Allah don't don't even go to another topic let us address this topic okay. first okay okay now okay. I'm now I'm going to talk Wait, yes. since you since you don't want to read, I'm going to read for you because you're nothing but a liar and deceiver and I'm going to prove to everyone that you are a liar and deceiver and you follow a satanic prophet. Because it clearly says, it clearly says, the messenger, let me start from the beginning. The messenger of Allah, bless him and give him peace, recited it. But when he reached, have you thought upon Allah al uzza wal manat this is not my tafsir this is your tafsir for the quran by asbab al zulba al wahidi very respected scholar for the tafsir have you thought upon Allah al uzza wal manat let me finish abdul let me finish go ahead, go ahead, have yes. you have, have you thought upon Allah al uzza wal manat the third and the other chapter 53 ayah 90 20 the devil satan put on his tongue the tongue of who of muhammad your prophet what he had secretly wished and hoped for and said these are the mighty cranes al-gharaniq al-ula inna shafa'atahunna la turtaja and their intercession is hoped for when the Quraysh heard this from Muhammad they were very pleased and the messenger of Allah bless him and give him peace carried on reciting until the end of the surah and then pressed it so Muhammad bowed down He did sujood to the pagan, three pagan idols, the three daughters of Allah. All the Muslims followed him in suit and prostrated. And all the pagans, the idolaters of pagan Mecca, who were present, also did sujood and bowed down to the three idols, bird idols, the three daughters of Allah. All those who were present, whether Muslim or prostrated. So everyone prostrated except two very old guys, these two. Who could not because they were very old and when we keep on reading then they said they said muhammad has mentioned the pagans said muhammad has mentioned our idols with complimentary terms so they were very pleased to hear that muhammad was giving positive stuff about them saying nice stuff about the pagan idols of the Quraysh. we know that allah gives life and takes it away so they believed in allah to be the supreme moon idol he creates and provides substance but these idols of ours will intercede for us because they are bird idols they carry the prayers of the pagans all the way to the supreme idol who is allah now that muhammad was associated them who the three idols Allah al -Mad, we are all with him so the pagans are all with Muhammad why because he was talking very nicely about their pagans then look what it says that evening couple hours later that evening gave Jibreel don't lose your peace voice. no no just a second Jibreel peace be upon him went to the messenger of Allah he, he, he went to Muhammad he visited Muhammad Allah bless him and give him peace and said What have you done, Muhammad? Spank, spank. What have you done, Muhammad? You recited to the people that which I did not bring from Allah. Hey, is he? And you said, I did not say to you. So here, Jibreel is spanking Muhammad, saying, oh, oh, what have you done? I did not give you these ayahs. These are the ayahs of Satan. So actually, Satan controlled your prophet and spanked him later for giving the satanic verses to the pagans of Mecca. Thank you very much. Why are you lying? Why are you deceiving the listeners, Mr. Abdul? Can, can I talk now? Talk. I listen, right? You, you're going to cut me off, right? Yeah, I was reading, right? The proof is in front of you. Are you telling me? Are you telling me, me that that yeah, as Babin Nizul Wahidi is lying? Is this, lie? is, this lie? is this a lie? Is this a lie? Is this fake? I can't even talk. Let oh. me respond. Prove to, to everyone audience. that this is false. Prove to everyone that this is false. I will Go prove ahead. to everyone. 
I read the verse of the Quran, Al Karim. Clearly, Allah said, "We did not send before you, Muhammad." You, okay, okay. Do you know? Do you, are you a better scholar than this guy? Are you are you a better scholar than this guy? Is this guy a liar and deceiver like you? Please tell everyone. This is, please. This is a shame, man. That I for five minutes. I listened quiet. I didn't say anything. Okay, but tell me if this is a lying deception, Tafsir. Let tell everyone, speak, please. How can I show you if you don't let me speak? Speak! Go ahead, speak! What do you mean, speak? Shut up and let me speak. That's it. I shut up and, and okay, let me speak. But say, okay, when you speak, please tell everyone that this guy, this Al Wahidi, is a fake liar and a deceiver. He's a liar and deceiver. I'm telling everyone that you are going to get me. If uh, if uh, if uh, if Muhammad's words was corrupted, why isn't it in the Quran then? If Satan did mess up Muhammad's word, did mess up the Quran, why don't you find those satanic words in the Quran? They never been in the Quran. You got the book of the Quran. Show me one satanic word verse in the Quran. So you've got this. That, is, this that is the satanic verse, Abdul. Later, Jibril removed it. Let me it was finish. removed. It was removed from the Quran. Oh, so Allah yeah. abrogated them. <laughs> Just like right? it never was written in the Quran. It never was written in the Quran. It never. This was the in the Quran. This was in the Quran. But Jibril spanked Muhammad. He spanked him. He so let Muhammad bow bow on his lap, and he spanked me. his ass. What Tell have you me. done, Muhammad? Oh, uh oh, this is not what I give you. Isn't that a shame? Why are you I, lying? Why are you lying? You are, voice. you are losing your voice. You are shaking because you're talking to me. Let me speak. It's simple as that. I let you speak for five minutes. I cannot even have 30 seconds. That's ridiculous. Are you serious? I give it 10 Don't times. cry, Abdul. Don't cry. Don't waste my time. Don't cry. Okay? I, I'm just saying, let me speak. Are you going to refute this stuff, sir? Yes or no? I will refute anything that contradicts the word of my God. Because my God is my reference. Okay, okay. Since you said that, can you tell everyone that Al Wahidi is a filthy scumbag and liar? Go ahead. Go ahead, brother. You you are ashamed, bro. I no, swear no, no, no. You are you are you are ashamed to not say it. Say everyone. Say to everyone in front of everyone that Asbab and Azul by Al Wahidi is a lie and deception. Say it. You're telling me a tough thing. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it, Abdul. Yeah, I said you know, it you're wasting times. my time. You're wasting said, my time. You're wasting yes, my time. Yes, because I know. You are wasting my time. I read you my Quran. Allah told you. Give me my two minutes. Take five. Give me two. I will not allow you to speak if you are wasting my time. And you are wasting my time. See, guys, this guy, Abdul, is like last time. He called me and he's wasting my time. He doesn't want to read the tafsir. This is not my tafsir. This is tafsir of the Abduls, official kingdom of Jordan website, owned by the king. And this is the tafsir, the tafsir. Asbab al-Nizul by al wahidi Who are you, Abdul? After 1400 years later, who are you? Who are you? You're a guy from Senegal. You don't even speak Arabic. And you don't want to read the tafsir because you are ashamed because the proof is in front of you that Satan actually gave me the satanic verses. Don't call me, don't call me, Abdul. Don't call me. Don't waste my time. Guys, um, I want to address, like I said, a couple of questions from last time by Abdul Lutba. If we go to chapter 33, ayah 50, because Abdul Lutba, I hope she, she or he is here, to uh, see that I'm going to answer his question. Abdul Lutba, if you are in the text chat, I'm going to answer your question. He was asking guys about chapter 33, Surah Al-Ahzab, chapter 50. Chapter 33, Ayah 50. Here it's talking about that Muhammad has no limitation. He can have any woman, any believing woman, any Muslima, Right? Any sexy Muslima, if she wants to give herself to Muhammad to ha to, uh, so he can have sexual intercourse with her, it doesn't say marry, you know? It's uh, nikah, right? Yes, tenkihuha, right? Nikah, sex. 
This is only for you. For who? For Muhammad only, excluding the other believers. So only Muhammad can have sex with an unlimited number of, of women, right? But the normal Muslims are only allowed to have a maximum of four wives, right? So here Muhammad had zero limitation. So if we go, scroll down, because that Abdul Ludba, she or he was saying, why are you not reading the verses that come after it? Okay, let us read it. You, O Muhammad, may put aside who you will of them or take to yourself who you will, and any that you desire of those women. So still, he can have any women, right? But in chapter 52, then it says, you know, Allah changing his mind, like we said to you, Allah changed his mind every time. After Muhammad had enough women to have sex with them, Allah changes his mind immediately after two ayahs. Look how silly Allah is. He will change his mind for the sake of Muhammad because Muhammad had enough women. He had sexual slaves. Then it says, you know, when Muhammad is satisfied, not lawful to you are women after, nor for you to exchange them for wives, even if their beauty were to please you. So this is a chapter that was basically very far ahead when Muhammad was in power, right? He was a king. He still, he can have sex slaves. Look at the irony. Look out the, about the hypocrisy, guys. He can have as many as sex slaves because right hand possesses what your right hand possesses means you can have sex slaves as many as you want, except what your right hand says. So he cannot have more than, let's say, 11 wives, but he's still allowed to have sex slaves to please him. You see the hypocrisy? No, no, you are not allowed to marry more than 11 women or 13 women, whatever. You know, Muhammad had a lot of women, but you can have, go ahead and have sex slaves if you capture them in battle you can have go and f them you see the hypocrisy guys so here by this guys i just answered the question of abdul lubda your fake prophet loved to abrogate himself blaming allah for abrogation allowing him to have his own sexual desires no limited number but then muhammad was satisfied from the muslim women he didn't want to have muslim women anymore so he uh, went for the sex slave that he captured in battle, right? Like Rihanna bin Shamon, like Safiya, poor Safiya, who was raped on the same night when Muhammad killed her husband, her whole family, and he raped her in that tent, right? You see the hypocrisy of Muhammad. He loved to have, you know, blonde women. If we go to the Quran in chapter nine, you will see that Muhammad went uh, to attack the Romans. And he said, you are allowed to have the yellow blondies who are the daughters and the wives of the Romans, the sex slaves of the Romans. And he sent a letter to the Romans, Aslim Fataslim, convert or else your head will come off clean. Okay, guys, are there any other questions, guys, in the text that I can answer? Let me scroll to try and answer questions. Why does Quran tend to deny the closeness of God and humans? The army of Christ is asking this. Well, because Allah is far, far away. According to Muslims, and in my first video, first live show, I showed everyone that actually Allah can enter his creation. He manifested himself on the mountain. He went inside the fire. He is inside a tree. But Muslims love to deny this and say that Allah is far, far away. He is far away from his creation. So they, Muslims actually do not have any relationship with their fake idol, the moon idol, Allah. This is why uh, the army of Christ. Let me see if I can answer other questions. Okay, the army of Christ again says, why do all hadith exist? Al-Quran is not enough. Clearly, the Quran of Allah is not enough. 
because for example Muslims have to follow five pillars of Islam that's what they call it zakat five prayers right the shahada right but the five prayers is not mentioned in the Quran only three are mentioned right the five prayers you can find them in the hadith so you cannot call yourself a Muslim if you reject hadith you have to follow the hadith because even the shahada is not to be found in the Quran you have to go to the hadith to see and find the, sh the shahada you have to go to the hadith to find the five prayers which are part of the five pillars did you catch it guys so this is why the Quran of Allah is not imagine guys if the Christians would say the Bible of God the Holy Bible is not enough Lord have mercy the words of Allah are not enough so you need the words of Muhammad who is nothing but a warner according to the Quran you need his words to complete your religion and as you see guys ultimate truth who called He's nothing but a liar and a deceiver. He didn't want to read the tafsir, right? He didn't want to read the tafsir because he's a scumbag, a liar and deceiver. And he didn't want to call Al-Wahidi and his Azbab al the tafsir of the Quran, lying, lies and deception. Because he knows this is, this is historical fact that Muhammad was controlled by the devil and the devil cast the satanic verses. هذه الغرانيق العلا إن شعت شفاعتهن لا ترتجى. These are the mighty cranes, bird idols, and their intercession is hoped for. He gave this satanic verses to the pagan Quraysh of Mecca. And ultimate truth, he has no clue what he's talking about. He doesn't know Arabic, and he loves to to tell you. That he doesn't want to follow any tafsir, but he, at the same time he's a hypocrite. He can't call Al Wahidi a liar and a deceiver. Why? Because he knows in secret he does follow this. He has to follow this. Tafsir is part of Islam. You have to follow the tafsir. The early scholars. This is a early scholar, one of the earliest scholars. This is why you can see this tafsir on the Kingdom of Jordan website owned by the king and there are other websites that you go and find Al-Wahidi in it this is a very authentic tafsir for the Quran chapter 22 ayah 52 right as you see in front of you so this is why he didn't want to read because he knows that Muhammad is nothing but a messenger of Satan of the devil himself what a shame what a cult what a satanic cult Guys, um, as you know, I have really a very... Don't call me, Abdul, don't call me. I'm done with you. As you see, guys, Muhammad is nothing but a Satan prophet receiving satanic verses from the devil who was controlling Muhammad. And we didn't even mention the black magic that was cast on Muhammad. Also Satan controlling the mind of Muhammad. Muhammad thinking that he had sex with his wives while well, he was dreaming that it was not true. If we go to the hadith of Aisha, we can find that Aisha is reporting that Muhammad was walking like a majnoon, a madman, possessed by jinn, by Satan, controlling Muhammad for at least six months. Yeah, my PC guys is very slow. This is why. So if you ha can and do so, please donate to us thank you for your donations and if you can please become a patron on my patreon account my patreon account is patreon.com slash rob christian and you can use the super chat to donate for a new equipment so i can give you better quality live streams guys we need your support abdul if you're going to call me again i'll block you i know it's you uh, ultimate truth i know I'm done with you. I'm done with your lies for today. You could call me another time when I go live again. Enough is enough. And as you saw, we answered the question of Abdul Lutba, who was calling me a joke and whatnot that other day. Stop calling me!
any one last question guys and then we can wrap this up thank you for joining in guys god bless you thank you for your support please don't forget to smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe and like my today's live stream any more questions let's see if I can answer the last question Guys, there is some delay, so. Yeah, Ibrahim, did you catch it, Abraham? VH? You're saying, ha, 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 who is he? Who is ultimate truth? He's not even a scholar. Can he say, as Baba Nazul Bal Wahid is fake? Well, you know, he's a, he's a retard, man. And as you saw, he didn't want to call Al Wahidi names. He didn't want to call him a liar and deceiver because he knows it's true. They cannot deny their sources. And let me again. Copy the link and use this guys to show the Muslims that Muhammad actually was possessed by Satan himself. Right? Right? And I want to thank uh, our brother Phil Horeira, who is my admin in the live chat. Thank you, bro. You are doing an amazing job always posting the sources for our brothers and sisters in Christ and for the Muslims who can see that Muhammad was nothing but a messenger of the devil you know I'm beginning to have a really sore throat because I'm talking for at least an hour or so maybe longer I did not keep the time but as you see guys Islam is nothing but a fake religion. 